Greetings YouTubers, how's it going out there in YouTube land? Just another day slash night in paradise, right? That's what I thought. Well, this is a 2002 Trailblazer, and if you uh, remember earlier, uh, I did a video on, uh, I had a swaying problem in the front when I would go over an uneven place in the road. Uh, I felt like the uh, front end was moving just a little bit left and right uh, over some places where the road was a little even, especially when you went to change lanes. I did upper, lower ball joints, tie rod ends, you name it finally figured out the lower support brackets on the control arms are bad now a lot of guys I don't change these out I haven't found any videos online of people actually doing this but uh, I want to show you uh, how it's done it's not too bad to do we'll have to take the wheel off and all that let me show you a picture of this bracket real quick And there it is, and you can see I got a pretty good deal on it. So we're going to be replacing those. Uh, you can buy the whole thing, but my lower control arm was okay. It's just that bracket that bolts underneath the frame, the front of the frame, and we'll be doing the same thing on that side. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the front end up. I'm going to do them both at the same time. That one on that side is a little worse than uh, the driver's side. So we're going to take both wheels up, put them off. Uh, we're going to take both wheels off, I'm trying, what I'm trying to say. And uh, we're going to put the wheels under the frame, put some blocks under it, and go ahead and do both sides. And uh, get this job underway, and uh, hopefully it'll steer a lot better. So uh, I'm going to set the camera up on time lapse. And a lot of stuff here is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, uh, we got to take the upper and lower ball joints off. And we got to take the uh, tie rod ends off and the uh, hub and axle and all that. Uh, it's not too bad of a job if you just take your time at it. That's what we're going to do on both sides. So uh, let's get to it. Perfect. Okay, you can see how far I've gotten so far. Um, everything came off pretty easy. Uh, everything is basically 15, 10 millimeter, and uh, 13 uh, millimeter sockets. All you need really uh, at this point. Now, this nut that was on this axle, that is a big socket there, and you're going to have to have something like this. This is a 36 millimeter socket. Uh, I used an impact, electric impact wrench gun, but you could probably use just a uh, breaker bar. Break it loose while the tire's still on the ground. Now, since I've got a lot of this off here, I got off to a bad start. I could not get this guy here, this little plastic piece here. I had to squeeze that, get it through the bracket, because this is your ABS wire. I did not want to break that, but that took longer than anything else here. But um, so far, so good. Uh, got to do the upper ball joint, take that loose. Got to take these uh, sway bar end links off. These are new, so they should come off pretty easy. Got the upper ball joint there, tie rod end, lower ball joint nut right there. Once I take that off, then I can go ahead and start working on this here, getting it off. But I still have to take off this uh, strut here, this coil spring. Um, I can either take it off right here. There's a pinch uh, bolt there that squeezes that onto that uh, lower shock, or I can take it off down here. Uh, I'm not sure which one I'll do first. But once I get all that off, then this whole unit will come off. Then I'll have excess in the lower control arm. Then there's two big bolts back here in the back. In this control arm. One right about there. And there's one on that side over here. Once I get these out, then that'll this lower control arm will come out. Then I go ahead and take that bracket out back there. So that's what we're going to be working on next. So, uh, so far, so good. And like I said, everything so far has been basic tools, uh, millimeters, sockets and all that so uh, not a complete tutorial but uh, I have plenty of tutorials online how to take off a lot of this uh, stuff here on other videos and there's hundreds of videos online on how to do it so uh, let me get back out of here and uh, go ahead and get this knuckle off so we can get into lower control arm There it is. Uh, the whole thing is off. Uh, on the bottom of these ball joints, you basically, if you get a pretty decent hammer, something like this, it doesn't have to be terribly big, but if you hit it several times on the side, it will knock that ball joint, lower ball joint off of that. And these ball joints I replaced not long ago, and they are nice and sturdy, nice and tight. And uh, when you get it off, make sure you check your bearing, spin it. 
Shouldn't be any noise or any play. Feels really good. Enters the upper ball joint. Replaced not long ago. So now we'll go ahead and put this off to the side and uh, just out of uh, showmanship here, I want to show you, you can leave your axle in, put your uh, tie rod in off to the side and just kind of leave your ABS wire hanging. Make sure you keep your uh, brake rotors uh, somewhere where they will not fall or hang loose by the brake line. So uh, we're down to the nitty gritty. So what I've got to do now is go ahead and uh, take this guy here off. Not sure if I'm going to do it from there or here. I think it's probably going to be a little bit easier from there. Just take that pinch bolt off and take it out of the uh, bottom of the shock gear. And uh, take these two guys loose, or one of them at least. And uh, then take the big bolt off of the back here. Uh, then that whole bottom piece will come out. So uh, if you take your time at it, it's not too bad of a job. It's taking me about uh, 45 minutes to do all this. So back to time lapse, and let's go ahead and see if we can get this whole lower control arm out and have access into our bracket back air that bolts onto the frame. Okay, so we got our pinch bolt out on the bottom of this shock here, all the way down to the top of this uh, knuckle, this whole unit here. And you have to take this bolt clear out, this nut, because it goes through there and it actually, there's a little place cut in here where this bolt kind of hangs in there and keeps that together. So you have to take that off, out. Now the only thing I have to do now is go ahead and take off this guy here, that long bolt there. And we got one in the back here. Once we take that off, then our lower control arm will kind of pivot out. And once we pivot that out and let it swing down a little bit, this will let this come down because this here is as low as it'll be. Uh, it is right now as low as it'll, it can go. And uh, this is how we take that off. So uh, let's do that. All right, as you can see, we finally got this uh, thing loose. Um, having a hard time getting it uh, from uh, the bottom of that strut shock. But uh, on the back here, uh, this one bolt was really hard to get out. The problem is it hits the bottom of the daggone uh, rack and pinion. Uh, so a better solution for you might be is to go ahead and take the two bolts out of the bottom of this bracket here and let this whole thing slide out so you can slide this out. I don't know why they didn't put the bolt in like this where you could just slide it out that way. But I did get it out and I did tear the boot just a little bit right there on the bottom of that. But I think it was already torn. There's a tear place on the top of it. But I'll replace that a little bit later. So if you want, you can just leave this like this and let it hang. Because, uh, really, at this point, we can go ahead and, and take this guy out. There are bolts underneath it here. There is one. Let's see if I can find it for you. One right there. And there's one in the back. We'll get these out. Those two there. Then we can pry that whole thing out. And also, I pulled the boot out of the CV axle. No big deal. I got a clamp to put back on it. I was trying to take the axle and pull it up out of the way with a bungee cord but it popped off the little boot plastic piece there the little rubber what i'm trying to say bracket clamp cv clamp and uh but the bearings here everything everything is okay it's kind of sitting over there it's all in good shape i'll just pop it back in a little bit later but we're down to the nitty gritty so i'm gonna go ahead and take that out i'm not sure if i'm gonna go ahead and try to take this out there's a lot of rust it spins around but it, it just won't come out you can see through there there's nothing holding it I've been hitting it, so um, I may go ahead and try to take this out just because uh, it's bugging me. <laughs> but once we get this out, then we'll go ahead and take this piece out in the back. And we're pretty much done at this point, so uh, it wasn't too bad. And here is why I'm replacing it. Look at this right here. Check that bushing out. Wow. This one's pretty bad on this one here. That's why we're changing these out on this uh, trailblazer. All right, so I decided just to go ahead and leave that together, and I even put the bolt back in there, the pinch bolt, if you can see it, because the strut, the spring, the housing that's supposed to be right about there 
Well, it slipped off the shock. It went on down. So, uh, yeah, now I'm going to have to buy a shock with a support that's on it so that spring will stay in it. So uh, the joys of working in the Northeast on vehicles with salt and rust, huh? But not a big deal. But on the bottom here, you will have to have a breaker bar. And let me just show you real quick. I got one of the bolts loose. It's right here. And uh, I had to put some muscle into it. And here it is. It's a pretty big bolt. There's one of them. Now we gotta take one in the back out, which is uh, Right about there, it looks like it's about the same size. Okay, so I finally got all the bolts out on the bottom, and let me tell you what, these big bolts here, you gotta have a big socket, you gotta have a 13 16, so make sure you get a breaker bar, because these babies are in there. Might have a lot of rust on them, and you'll have to get you a cheetah bar. Once you get them started, uh, they'll, they'll start to move, but you can probably put a little oil up on the top of them here. But here's how they go in, there are two in the back, little 15s, a set like that. And you got these two, then you got one up front up there and you can rest them are back there so now all I, all I have to do now is go ahead and pry this out get my uh, pry bar and slide that whole unit out and uh, take a look at it so uh, we're going to get that out I think you can see it there, it's coming out. Ah, oh, there it is, finally, it's out. That's what we're gonna be replacing. So let's take it over here and look at it in the light real quick. Oh, it's pretty heavy too. And you see these bushings here. Uh, it's what usually goes bad. The other side is really bad. Uh, this side here you can see this bushing is all busted up. So if you have any road swing or anything, uh, you might want to take a look at that. And I think you can see where it kind of sits in there. In there like that. And it sits back in here like that. Get the camera just right for you. And the bolts are on the bottom. Down there. So let's go ahead and slide our new one in. Okay, so here are the new ones. Got them both for $63 free shipping. This is what we're going to be putting on. Quite a job just to get these on, but uh, it can be done with a little patience. Uh, we got two of them here, and you got this one here that says R for right, and the other one L for left. When you take the one off, you can just simply match it up. If you're confused on which way it might go, this one goes like this. I know this one here will go just like that so actually this is the wrong one here so let me go get the other one out of the other box okay there we go that's the one we want left left for the driver's side yes that would be right left side passenger side would be the right side so this would be R that would be for the other side so let's get this on all right, it's a new day. It's a little warmer, and I came outside because I have a little more room. And uh, this side is done. The driver's side is done. Let's go over to the passenger side real quick. Here's a new one that we're putting on, and you can see these bushings on this one here are really tight. You can't move these. They're tight. Like they should be. Now here is up on the vehicle. There's the one we're taking off right now. And if I stick a screwdriver in this, look how much this thing moves around. Whoops. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me get a little, little bit of a camera view there for you better. You see. <laughs> you can hear that too. So this were uh, this is why it was pulling off to the right trying to sway just a tiny bit in the steering wheel. If you drive your vehicle long enough, you notice these little things. It doesn't take much. Now, uh, before we take this out, my advice is, 
Um, worst case, you may have to re get alignment, but I'm gonna take a piece of wire and kind of measure this here, bend it. I'm gonna do one right here and one here, so I'll know exactly how far in this should sit. Right where my finger is. I don't know if you can how well you can see that, but you get the idea. Kind of mark it. Uh, whatever works best for you because when you put this back in uh, your alignment might be off a little bit and one last thing I didn't take off my strut on this side. I just took off the bottom Here and just kind of let it hang There's the bolt I took off on the bottom of this uh, strut the knuckle there and this wouldn't come off anyway Some guys I've seen take them right off. It just depends on your vehicle, but there's still enough room to get in here and take that out back in there this whole section and put the new one back in so i'm gonna go ahead and measure this and then go ahead and put the uh take this one out and put the new one in but uh i couldn't believe just how bad that is right there it doesn't take much in these bushings or front end start giving you some problems but you can see it's there we go Pretty loose. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and put this one in and measure it.
All right, everyone, it is done. Our new support brackets are on, and I'm really happy about that. And you can see, uh, you might get a look at it there, but you can see they're kind of in there. I took a wire and made a measurement on the front to there, and you can see part of the frame was above it and below it, and I just bent the wire before I took the old one off and kind of get an idea where that one should be. But in worst, at the worst case uh, scenario, you might have to take it and get an alignment. But if you do that, I think your alignment's gonna be pretty much on. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the wheel on and clean up this mess out here. And we're gonna take it out for a ride and we're gonna see how this thing steers and all that. And I appreciate you guys sticking with me to the end of the video. So uh, next clip you see, will be us out driving it and uh, giving you an update on how it feels. So let's get this done. All right, a little update. Uh, final video clip I've been driving it now for three or four days and it's taken a lot of the uh, play out of the front end of this vehicle it steers really nice now although I was talking to fix that strut in spring I'm not sure I want to do about that and uh, it steers pretty straight I mean I'm, I'm going in a curve here but you can see there we go you can see it's uh, fairly straight I may tinker with the alignment a little bit later but other than that it's done and that is how you change out the lower control on brackets on these uh, trailblazers so if you like this video give me a thumbs up and say hi and subscribe and all that so until my next video thanks for watching and I will see you later